All right, you guys, how's it going? Derek64 here, and I'm gonna be bringing you an awesome unboxing that I've been looking forward to like a deranged madman. I've been waiting on this for quite some time. I'm gonna be unboxing Torok 1 and Torok 2, the complete editions, physical editions um, of the updated Torok games 1 and 2 from Night Dive Studios that have a physical print run made from limited run games. An awesome site you may have heard, but in case you haven't, they're basically a, a, a company that does physical run games, physical prints of games um, that would otherwise only be available digitally. Uh, you know, there might be some stipulations on top of that, but that's generally the gist of it. And Torque 1 and 2 are available on multiple platforms. However, these are for the Switch, and they're the only physical copies, at least at the time of this video, that are made available to the public. Uh, generally speaking, however, since they're limited run, they only print out so many games, you know, physical prints, within the time of the actual pre-orders had taken place. I pre-ordered this back in mid-August, and I was watching and waiting like a fiend, waiting for them to do some announcements as far as production and when they were going to ship out. They finally shipped them out. It's pretty much just about the middle of January, so it was quite a long wait, and I would check the site religiously, waiting for them to, to actually ship it out, because this is something that I've been wanting to get for quite some time. I believe I saw the initial announcement for these, or I saw the announcement for these initially, I should say, um, around the time of E3 2019. So I've been waiting for this for the better part of a year, almost. So I'm super glad I got them. I'm a huge, huge Torak fan, have been ever since I was a little boy. And I've been wanting to kind of recapture that magic for quite some time. So enough rambling for me. I've waited long enough. Let's go ahead and, and open up this box and see what we get out of it. Let's go ahead and open this guy up. I've been borderline getting to the point where I was almost going to be a pest when I was asking for information. Uh, I would check out, I would check on their Discord and even ask about Torok uh, on their streams. Uh, Derek64, um, if you've already ordered a CE then you should probably ch either look at the product page or product your account page. page. Yeah. Uh, do you know if there are any updates on Turok? No. Yeah. Not oh, there. Look, good guy Patrick actually being useful in chat. Wow. Yeah. Pa uh, just FYI, Derek. Uh, PFB three is LRG staff. Oh wow. And here they are. Oh. Okay. Uh oh. Wasn't expecting that. Okay, hold on. Just gonna... Huh. Forever physical. That's nice. Alright. A little top-heavy. Now, right off the bat, I just want to say that inside the inside the, the shipping box where, with the games, they did um, uh, send two of these nifty little holographic uh, uh, Torok cards here uh, with limited run that's kind of something that I've been accustomed to when it comes to like you know these physical editions of games whether it's uh, uh, indie box you know rest in peace to them you know I guess limited run games uh, takes the time to do the same thing as well because this is my first ever anything that I've gotten from limited run games but this is definitely cool always like to have something physical and always love the additional little bells and whistles the little trinkets that you know, companies like this always make a priority to include because that, to me, at least, goes a long way. Right off the bat, before I start opening these, I want to let you all know that these are extremely heavy. I don't know if you can kind of gauge the weight. Ooh, it's so thick. Um, but this package together is over two pounds, which I don't know if, they, I mean, that doesn't sound like a lot, but um, there's a considerable amount of heft that, you know, these, these additions have. Now, I don't have any N64 games that are boxed that I can use for comparison, but virtually the Super Nintendo games were, uh, were, were pretty much the same as far as the size of the box and stuff, other than, you know, just games that had any extra pack-ins. But for the most part, whenever you got an N64 game, uh, this is what they would look like for the most part. And again, this is a Super Nintendo box, but for reference, I mean, it's pretty much uh, identical, which is definitely cool. It's definitely awesome to have that. 
So it would be appropriate, I feel, to open up uh, Torok the Dinosaur Hunter first. So let's go ahead and do that. And look at that. Oh my God. It's beautiful, man. <laughs> so anyways, as you can see here, um, the box itself is holographic. Definitely a nice touch. So just to, just to clarify, this is the Torox CE. It's easy to get that the CE confused with Collector's Edition, which in all intents and purposes, it is a Collector's Edition. But by their nomenclature, they uh, refer to these types of sets as the complete editions. The actual uh, illustrations, as well as the, uh, the lettering, the title lettering and all that, it's all embossed. So it actually is raised. I can actually feel it against my fingers. I can actually feel it against my skin, which is definitely pretty, <laughs> it's definitely cool. It's a nice extra touch. Um, fun fact, and I don't have the box unfortunately show you, but the actual game, uh, Torok Rage Wars, the original box art, or the box that the game came in in that, the Torok lettering was actually embossed on that too. So that's something interesting, and that actually might be a potential callback to, to that game's original box art design as well. Uh, I would like to know if that's actually one of the reasons why they decided to do this. Also, you, as you can see here, this is for the Switch and rated M for Mature. You can see that it's limited to run, but on top of that, it has that classic only for Nintendo 64, except, you know, they did a play on it where it's only from limited run games, which is outstanding. I also want to give you all a picture of the back. This is just something that is on the back, well, was on the back of many games. Again, I'm going to use my F-Zero box for uh, reference. I mean, it's pretty much the same. Now, this is literally from 1990. This is from, well, it's the year 2020 at the time of this video, and this was made in 2019, so, I mean... Not much difference, which is not a bad thing. Definitely, almost 30 years, and pretty much they, they kept the heart of how the box is supposed to be presented. Definitely A-plus for presentation on Torog. No creases in the box. That's a win right there. Okay. So, looks like we got a poster. Ooh, the official soundtrack, of course. And of course, the coup de gras, the actual game itself, which we'll definitely get into that here. Ah, wow. And probably, at least in my opinion, other than the game of itself, of course, this is the most desirable component that is in this complete edition. The decorative metal uh, N64 cartridge. And this is heavy. This is definitely he heavy, that's for sure. It's hollowed out, uh, or not hollowed out, but it is a cartridge. It isn't a solid piece of metal, but even on top of that, it's extremely heavy. This is a beautiful piece of artwork, man. This is absolutely phenomenal. This is great. It does a very good job mirroring the artwork of an original Torok cartridge. It's a beautiful, beautiful decorative piece. Um, there's nothing inside the bottom, as a matter of fact. You, I could probably, yeah, that goes all the way in there. But wow, th this is impressive. And it's definitely very, very hefty. And there's no really way, there's no way to open this up. I wanna see if people would actually take the time to modify one of these to actually put in an original PCB in there in order to, to run a game. Now, of course, you have the original Torox soundtrack. Now, I'm not super crazy when it comes to soundtracks, but um, if you guys are familiar at all with any of my reviews, uh, amongst you, amongst some of the eagle-eyed, or maybe, let me get a little bit more nerdy, the blind ones, if you're a little bit more blind one about it, you actually may, may be able to point out certain instances where I've actually used some tracks from the original soundtrack of Torok 1 and Torok 2, as well as some other games in the series back on the N64, such as Rage Wars or even Part 3. It's a, it's a physical CD, and it comes with what seems to be here 14 tracks. Now, I'm, I'm taking this off the lot, okay? I know that there's an inherent value with keeping these pristine, but uh, I'm, I'm planning on using all this stuff. I'm planning on using the soundtrack. 
Oh, wow. That's cool. Look at that. The classic crosshairs. It's uh, it's basically mirroring uh, the logo of Torak 1 where the O is basically the crosshairs of a raptor. Because that's a raptor. These are raptors. Or maybe not. It has a horn on its nose. A Torak raptor. Very beautiful. Very amazing. I'm going to show you all the... the the poster. I am a little skeptical about opening this up because I think everybody can relate when when you want to close a poster back up and put it away. Because um, I like to try to get them laminated if I can. Um, nobody knows how to put them back the same way that you got them. And it's pretty big. It's all too easy to ruin these. Ugh. Oh my goodness. All right, and there you go. A poster that any Torhawk fan, let me go ahead and set this down here. A poster that any Torhawk fan would be happy to have. And oh, you know what I just noticed? Well, I noticed something else, but the box art, I guess the thing that would be presentable to most eyes, um, when the Raptor slashes at Torox ribs, there's no blood, but on the poster, blood. So we got a Mortal Kombat on Sega versus Mortal Kombat on Nintendo thing going on. Now, before we go ahead and and uh, move on to Torox 2, of course, we got to get into the actual game. Now, much like the actual box art, the... Um, the actual cover art for the switch case itself is also hollow as well. Um, that goes for the back as well. So the entire artwork that is on the switch case is holographic. On top of that, it also has the artwork as well as the title embossed as well, just like it does with the actual um, the actual Dan 64 styled box, which is definitely cool. There was definitely a lot of love and passion put into this type of uh, into this complete edition and uh, I, I'm I'm definitely thoroughly impressed with with how the quality of this came out I, think I should mention that I believe if memory serves each collector's edition uh, for Torok was $55 about so I spent a total of about hundred and ten dollars on both of these back in August of 2019 and you know what? I've heard a lot of people express grievances over the price. I, for one, am very happy with the amount of money paid. As a matter of fact, I'm very, I'm, I'm that person who's very, very insistent on having a physical co copy as opposed to a digital one. As much as I love Torok, once I found out that they actually had physical copies on the way, I made it a point to not buy the digital version only because I'm so, I was so interested in only playing it on a physical physical piece of media so and here's the game what's interesting too actually now that I'm seeing it you probably can't see it on camera unless I make an effort to maybe there you can see kind of the the light bouncing in a funny way it's basically huh, the inversion of the uh, embossed artwork which is yeah, pretty cool I like reversible artwork and this does kind of have it but I'll never, I'll never flip the artwork unless it actually says the name of the game on the spine. That's just how I am. But we have a little booklet here, which this is definitely amongst... Th these are quite the endangered species to have a, a, a booklet of any kind in a case these days. Very simple booklet. Gives you a quick overview of some of the more common enemies that you'll come across in the game. Some info on the programmer. They even include some of the cheats, some of the cheat codes in here that you can use to actually unlock some of the cheats in the game for uh, either to make it easier or just for laughs. Now, just to be clear, I, I did bring up the name earlier, but Night Dive Studios is the studio that actually took the original game and updated it. This is a remastered version of Torok. There you go. There's your Torok Switch cartridge. We've come quite a long way, haven't we? 
Now, I want to go ahead and point out, too, that some people have made mention that, you know, they don't think it's it's worth it to to pay the money that they're asking for, for a repackaged version of Korok. Um, but what I feel like a lot of people are, are misinterpreting or not understanding is that there have been substantial changes made to the game uh, that do affect gameplay. They do, uh, they did modernize the controls for a dual, uh, dual control stick, um, uh, uh, you know, control scheme, which is commonplace these days with games, especially with pretty much every uh, controller that's out on the market for uh, current generation consoles and the like. Um, a lot of those uh, use operate dual with dual control sticks and these versions of Torok uh, are no exception. They also made a lot of the mission objectives in the game a lot more easier to navigate because that may have been a, a source of frustration for some people to actually try to find some of these hidden items that were necessary in order for you to progress in the game. There have also been other functional changes. Other than actual performance upgrades and the like, there have been some quality of life changes for both of these games um, in order to, again, be a little bit more streamlined for uh, people f familiar with first person shooters today. And even for somebody like myself who's such a purist, I'm looking forward to seeing how much more uh, streamlined the experience would be with a lot of the first person controls being a lot more um, standardized. And uh, the adjustments made to Torok are no exception in this case based uh, with the remastery of Night Dive Studios' rendition of Torok. So, you have Torok 2 here, you got the box, it is hollow foil, as you can see, it also, um, with at least with the glare of the light, you can see the different, um, the different surface, you know, the surface finish is definitely different because of the way that the, uh, the light is diffusing across the box, you can see, you can see pretty clearly that it is embossed because there's many raised surfaces, um, I'll get a closer, closer, I'll, I'll get some close-up footage of that so you guys can have a better idea of what it is I'm trying to point out. So just like the first box, Torok 2, the title and such is embossed. They are surface rays, but again, it's pretty cool. And again, I just want to go ahead and say that this might be in reference to the Torok Rage Wars box art, which again, I always thought that was really cool back in the day. Um, holographic as well. And of course, you have all your bells and whistles as far as the information and so on on the back of the box, which is uh, again, something that I wanted to say is uh, is kind of a dying breed as well, but you know what? They do this on the back of cases too. So this is this is what it is. So let's go ahead and open this box up. So let's go ahead and just do this bit here. So we got another poster. The game, of course. I'm trying to do this without damaging the box. There you go. We got the Torok 2 Seeds of Evil official soundtrack, which I love the soundtrack. I am I beatbox it whenever I'm walking around. You also have another um, main huge big deal <laughs> with this complete edition is the actual decorative cartridge for Torok 2, the metal, as you can. I'm sure there's no contesting that this isn't plastic, this is metal. And it's uh, it's gunmetal, no less. Very, very, very beautiful decorative cartridges, man. Uh, and of course, for comparison's sake, uh, this is the original Torok 2 cartridge versus um, the decorative cartridge. As a matter of fact, let me take it out of the, out of the bag. And here you go. This is the uh, this is the new decorative piece, the actual collector's piece, and this is the original cartridge. Again, also hollow, um, but I'm not complaining. These are really awesome, nice show pieces. And since I'm the kind of person who likes to put stuff on display, well, these are going to have their fair moment in the sun. That's for sure. So, 
I also want to take the time to point out that still to this day, nostalgia goggles are not. Torok 2 is my favorite first person shooter. I played it when I was 10 years old. And uh, it's always been a game that's left such a huge uh, impact and impression on me since I was a, a little boy. And it's always a game that I take the time to revisit every so often. And now that there's these new versions made available physically, because I do understand that they've been out for quite a little bit digitally, uh, physically, I'm glad that I'm finally going to be able to kind of undergo that in its own new type of way, the best kind of way. Okay, so with Torak 2, we're going to do a little different. We're going to go in reverse as to what we did with Torak 1, and we're going to go ahead and get into the game case first. So here you go. Here's the game. And I guess uh, you do another little comparison. Man, how times have changed. How something so small can still hold massive amounts more of data over, over, over what was already considered pretty big at the time. It's pretty impressive. So this is the game. It's a Nintendo Switch cartridge, of course. Limited run games only did a physical print of, of Torok 1 and 2 on the Switch, just for the sake of knowing, in case y'all had the questions. This comes also with a little booklet, and it's more of a, a character booklet. Uh, we got Joshua Fireseed, aka Torok. We got Adon. Uh, you know, some of the main characters like the entrails. Uh, uh, raptoids, spiders, leapers, you have the flesh eaters, you have the Perlin, and you have a, even some of the original artwork for some of these. Also, you know, the blind ones, some of the River of Souls guys, so on and so forth. There's actually quite a little bit here for such a small little booklet. Even from what I understand is to be some concept art too, which is definitely super cool. So, we have, um, we have also a physical soundtrack of Torok 2 Seeds of Evil, just like the, just like the Dinosaur Hunter version. And, uh, not just Torok 1 and 2, but pretty much all the Toroks on 64, all four games on the 64, um, I really, really adore the soundtracks, I gotta say, and I'm not trying to be hyperbolic, I really, really do resonate a lot with the music that was made and, and, and composed for these games to the point where I have uh, just I just kind of like ad lib it when I'm when I'm doing stuff and uh, I mean that just goes to show that the music has left such a strong impression on me from such a young age so this has 19 tracks versus Torak Dinosaur Hunters um, uh, 15 or I'm sorry 14 tracks an actual physical disc and uh, I mean just for the sake of knowing the music that you're listening to right now is from both of these games so and definitely matches that gray teal bluish tinge with the with a, a red accent that you are kind of familiar with with that cover art for Torok but um yeah definitely I wouldn't mind bumping this in my car for sure and last but not least, the coup de gras. Now, again, I think we can all agree that there's a little bit of a panic involved, but I got the other one taken care of. So let's unfold this one. I don't want to force it. Kind of a long off center. This is basically the title screen and the box art. Hey, but you know what? It's a. Uh, a beautiful poster I want to take the time to also point out that the material that these posters are made out of is is really well done it doesn't feel like cheap flimsy paper that's gonna tear very easily it feels like thick heavy-duty uh, you know heavy-duty you know printing paper or whatever paper it is it doesn't feel cheap to say the least so let's go ahead and try to fold it back up all right you guys so that pretty much sums it up uh, this is one of the best editions of any kind I've gotten from anything ever. Now, like I said, whatever nomenclature you want to go ahead and use to apply to an edition like the, this, whether it's complete edition, collector's edition, uh, badass edition, you know, 
This is one of the best one of these I've ever gotten. And I've gotten a fair amount of other types of editions before. But this is definitely something that kind of really hits close to home for me because I've been such a huge Torok fan since I was a little boy. And it's so awesome that Limited Run Games did whatever they needed to do to make this relevant enough to where they actually, you know, made one of these types of editions for people like me. I almost missed out on it too, so I'm totally so grateful that I managed to be able to pick up these beautiful complete editions when I was able to. Shout out to Night Dive Studios. I love the work that y'all are doing. I've only recently taken the time to actually look into how you guys are uh, making efforts to bring older games back to the present and it looks like outstanding work and I'm definitely a fan because of this and I really do look forward to to you know jumping into Torok again but with a new coat of paint and a new couple of gears under the hood that's for sure but you guys thank y'all so much for checking out the unboxing there's more to come with Torok on this channel no doubt for sure so if you're interested in that kind of thing Definitely stick around, definitely subscribe. Share to your friends if they want to check out something that's awesome, you know, if they missed out or have any opinions on the complete editions themselves, definitely point them my way so they can check out the unboxing video and see what they think. Um, but that's going to be about it for me, you guys. Much love. Really appreciate y'all coming through. Be cool, stay safe, and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Take care. It's, uh... <sighs>